Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Has God been good to anybody this morning? If you're here, you got to get up and praise the Lord. Let's give God some glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God all the praise this morning. Let's show God that we love him, that we believe in him, we trust in him, we thank him. Lord God, you are worthy, and you are worthy of all praise, God. You are worthy of everything that we are, Lord God. You are worthy of everything that we do, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. Father God, we just want to thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you are about to do, Lord God. We thank you, God, for being our life. We thank you, God, for giving us life. We just want to thank you and praise you, God. We honor you. We honor you with our whole hearts, Lord God, with our whole mind, Lord God, with everything we are. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. Let's give God some glory. He is our, He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is all that we need. He is everything that you will ever need. And if you let him, he'll be all that you'll ever want. Let God be God in your life. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do, for all that you do. Father God, we want to thank everybody this morning for being here. We want to thank Facebook, our Facebook family. We hope that everybody just enjoys the service today. We hope everybody receive a blessing. And not just, a, I mean, give us, a, God, we want a blessing that will take us through the next week. Not just for today. We don't want to go home and just bless God today. We want to bless him all week until we meet again. Let's give God all the glory that he deserves. We honor you, Father God. We just praise you. We give you everything, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. Now, Father God, we're going to go into a word of prayer. First, God, we want to thank you. We just want to thank you, God. We want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough, God. I can never, if I had a million tongues, I can never give you the thanks that you need and deserve, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for where I am. I thank you, Lord God, for how you have kept me. I thank you, Lord God, just for being my Lord and Savior, for being everything that I need. Lord God, we honor you. We thank you. We just want to praise you. And everything that we can do for you, Lord God, give us the mindset to do it. Lord God, take our minds, Lord God, and wrap it up in your mind. Lord God, give us everything that we need, everything our desires, Lord God, and our first desire should be to be with you, to do as you want us to do, Lord God, to be what you would have us to be, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for our bishop. We thank you highly for our bishop, Lord God. We thank you for our first lady. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you're doing in their life. Because, Lord God, what you do in their life, it trickles down on us. If we listen and be obedient, it trickles down on us. And, Father God, it's, all, it's been a great blessing to me, if no one else. But they've been a blessing in my life. Father God, we thank you for our elder and his wife. We thank you, Lord God, because they have also been a great blessing to me. And I appreciate and I love them. Lord God, we thank you for the ministerial staff and their families. We thank you for the whole household of faith. Lord God, we just thank you because you are God. And I want to send out a special thanks to my restoration family. Last week, we buried our son. It was one of the hardest things that we've ever done. It's the, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I've lost three brothers and a sister, but this was so different. It hurt, and it still does. And I imagine it will for a while, but you know what? I just kept looking at it and looking at it and thinking about it and thinking about it, and, but you know what? And all that I feel and all that I hurt, I still know that my God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes. 
Sometimes, whether we like it or not, God has to take a life in order to save your soul. I don't know that that's what happened to my son, but all I know is he's with God. One way or the other, he is with God. And he has to, whatever he, wherever he died in the state that he was in, that's where he was. But we all have to go through that sometime. One of these days, we're all going to meet that. And why not be ready? Why not think about what's going to happen to you? You don't have to think about what's going to happen to you. If you trust and believe in God, you know what's going to happen to you. I don't want, I, you know, all of us have different places and different reasons. We all have different paths to take in this life. But at the end of the path, all of them should end up at the gate where God says, well done, my good and faithful servant. So your path might not be mine, and mine's not going to cooperate with yours, but whatever God gives you is for you. And if God gives it to you, then God believes that you can do it. So let's just th sit and think about it. Think about all of the things that God has done for us. And we have to stop forgetting if God did something last month, he can do it again this month. God is not a one-time God. And it's not a one-time shot. God loves us, church. And we need to turn around and love him back. He is the only one that we can always count on. The only one. You don't even have to worry whether he's going to show up or not. When you get to the door, he's already there. Let's give God some honor. Let's give God some glory. Let's give God what he needs. No matter what goes on in your life, God is still God. He always will be God. No matter what you go through. And it hurts, sure. But God is the one that can ease that pain because I found out that when you lose somebody, even though they can be sick for years, when it happens, it's a shock. It always is. But God is still God. And he does not make mistakes. I will miss my son, but I still love God. I still love him. And I love him because he took him. I don't know why, but he did. He's gone. But I still love him and I still miss him. And I pray, want y'all to continue to pray much for me. Continue to pray out strength in the Lord. And God, we just thank you. We thank you for the whole household of faith. I thank my restoration family and anybody that was a part of my son's home going. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but if you ever go through it and you need me, I'm there. I'm there for anybody. It doesn't matter because I have to show the love that God showed to me. And God is showing it to me because four months before my son got, four months after my son got cancer, I got it. I'm still here. I'm still here. So whatever God had for me to do, it's not done yet. Maybe Daryl's was done. Mine's not done yet because I'm still here. They called me dead. They said I was gone. God said, no, not yet. He said, no, not yet. I continue to pray all the time because I know God, and I know who God is, and nobody's ever going to take that away from me ever again. Not ever again. I know who God is, and I love him, and I trust him, and I want you all to continue to pray for me, Pray for, uh, continue to pray for the church, us as a whole, that we will come together as a whole and be there for each other, be like God. We're supposed to be little gods. Let us start being like God. Stop the backbiting. Stop all of that stuff. It's not good. And nobody knows. Everybody has a dash in between their numbers. You never know what's at the end of your dash. You don't know when your time is. You don't know when it's coming. So why not be ready? Don't try to be ready when it comes. Be ready before it comes. I know I'm going home with God. I know I am because I'm going to be ready. If I might stumble. I might fall. 
but I'm not going anywhere. So y'all continue to pray for me, continue to love on me, and I'll continue to love on you. And I pray that God is always with me, he's always listening, and that he will bring us, each and every one of us, closer together. And I pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My scripture reading is going to come from 1 Samuel. I've been reading 1 Samuel, and a lot of things in 1 Samuel has to do, I see, with my life. Because God is giving me some things that I need to continue to work for him, continue to go on, and continue to be a blessing to other people. So I'm going to share a little bit of this with you. And it's, I'm going to read 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse 32. And we all know the story is about David. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistines. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth and a man, and he is a man of war from his youth. And I'm going to skip, skip a couple of verses. I'm going to go to verse 37. David said, moreover, he fought with the lions, he fought with the bears, and God delivered him every time. He delivered him every time because David trusted and loved God. So God helped David every single time. Saul wanted to give David his armor put his armor on him, but David took it, he tried it on, David took it off and said, this has not been proven. He said, I have been proven by my God, so I'm going to wear God. He said, I'm going to put my little five rocks and my slingshot, and I'm going to fight this Philistine, this uncircumcised Philistine that has defiled God. But David knew God, and he knew God was going to take care of him. He knew it. And there was no doubt in his mind. And we're going to skip to verse uh, 38. And Saul armed David with his armor and put his and helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he, assessed, he assayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, I came not with the set with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. And he took his staff and his hand and chose him to five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip and his sling and his hand he drew near to the Philistine. Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, that God of the armies of the Israels whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine hand from thee, and I will give thee the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts, and of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. David didn't count on anything but God. This giant is 10 feet tall. David is a little ruddy thing. You know, he, he couldn't wear that armor that God, you know, I mean, that Saul put on him. But David trusted in God. And our thing for this month was trust in God. That's what we have to do, saints. We've got to learn to trust in God. Don't go in your own self. Don't try to fight your own battles. Let God fight your battles. Any, our arms is too short to box with God. 
let God do what he do. Let God be God in your life and continue to keep us. Nobody can keep us like God. Nobody can fight for us the way God can. We can't even do it. Anything that you need, God has it. Anything that you want, God will can give it to you. But he's not going to give you anything that's going to take him away from him. And you shouldn't want anything that's going to take you away from God. So whatever you do, love and continue to trust in God. Continue to be where you need to be when God wants you to be there. Amen. Love, trust God for all that God can do for you. And continue to pray my strength in the Lord. Now we're going to invite the praise team up. And the next voice you will hear will be that of Elder Russell Slade. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we summons all the praise. The praises this morning. Amen. We have any praises in the house this morning? I know what is about to come in the house. To praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love to praise him. Come on. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. His holy name. His holy name. 
Let him be magnified, glorified, and lifted up high. And say, if you lift up the name of Jesus, all men will be drawn unto him. Hallelujah. I love it. Couldn't God have might. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We praise you. Hallelujah. Man, if that didn't start a fire inside of me. Hallelujah. How many people know that he is real? If you know he's real, let me hear you praise him. Hallelujah. This might be your last day. Your last opportunity to praise him. Jesus is real. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm, yes. Mm. There are some things yeah. I may not know. There are some places I, I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, or I can feel Him in my soul. Yes, God is soul out there that don't understand that he deserves it he deserves it he is worthy my hallelujah 
belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Say you deserve it. You deserve it.
to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Help me out, team. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. your hands up. You deserve it. 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 Come on, last time. You deserve hallelujah where your hallelujah at this morning don't you know your hallelujah belongs to God it belongs to him hallelujah 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 it make me want to go back to those songs oh, oh Lord I want you to help me come on get your praise on with us oh Lord I want you to help me. Come on. Help me on my journey. Yes, help me on my way. Come on, say it. Oh, Lord, I want you to help me. While I'm singing. While I'm singing. I want you to help me. Help me, Jesus. While I'm singing. I want you to help me. Hallelujah. Woo, help 
me on my journey. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, love. Hallelujah. Help me on my journey. The journey ain't never, he never said that the journey was going to be easy. He said that we would be going to, he told him they were going to go to the other side. Then he told him, he told him to get in the boat and go to the other side. I'll meet you there. But he never said what was going to happen on the way, on their journey. He never told them they would face a big storm. Hello, Rockledon, the granddaddy of all storms. He's told them, I'm going to meet you there. He has met every need in our life. He said, I'll supply all your need according to my riches and glory. I got to one more, something else pulling at my spirit, y'all. I got one more. I got to, we got to do one more. You are my strength. Because God is truly our strength. It's like no other strength that you can ever have. We're going to touch on it. You are my strength. Let's get Jaden going. You are my strength. Thank you, Lord. Strength like no other. That's it. Walk with us. Strength like no other. Come on. Reach as to me. All over the place, if you know Jesus, be your strength, say it. You are my strength. It's supernatural. Strength like no other. Come on. Strength like no other. Come on, talk to me. Reach to me. Come on, we in the fullness of Jesus right now. Somebody talk to us. In the fullness of your grace, in the power, in the power of your come name. Come on, somebody lift Jesus up. Could you come you out? Lift me up. Come on, somebody say I'm coming out right now. You lift me up. Come on. In the fullness, come on. In the fullness of your grace, in the power. Yeah. Say, I'm coming out of this thing. 
what you was in today but you coming out he's reaching down in somebody's situation this morning he's touching somebody's heart right now you coming about it right now in the name of Jesus he's your strength he's able to reach down into your darkness and pull you out into the marvelous light hallelujah he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can imagine and even think of He's your strength. He's your peace. He's your joy. Hallelujah. Let him pull you up. I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Coming out. I'm coming out. Hey. Strength like no other. Struggling. All your potholes. Your circumstances. Places that need to be healed. Places that need to be delivered. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. God, you are my strength. A strength like no other. A strength that never stops. That can't be held. That can't be stopped. Cannot be blocked. Jesus is pulling and holding down. He's holding you. He's reaching down for you right now. When the storms got rough, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. I'm talking to somebody that may have backslidden and took your eyes off Jesus. He's reaching down for you right now. All you got to do is say, save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. You don't have to be ashamed anymore. Therefore, there's no more condemnation for those that are in Christ. They are in Christ. Hallelujah. Hey, my, 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 Sata. Roko, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost strength. Holy Ghost power. Stay there till you get it. Open up your mouths all over this place. Let something new in. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. He's trying to become something. He's trying to work something in you. Get out of the way. No matter how big your storm is, when you go in your storm, make sure you got more faith than your storm has water. Hallelujah. That's a run right there. Make sure you got more faith in the storm than the storm has water. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Somebody was about to throw the towel in. Somebody thought that they could walk away from some situations. You can't walk away what God has placed into your life. Because he'll give you strength to go through. Even when you don't feel like he's with you, he said, I'll never leave you, nor... Will I forsake you? He caught on the bullshit. Every be believer has a responsibility. You got to express the new man in Christ. Old things have passed away. And all things are being made new in your life. As you get a relationship with God, things are changing. The old way of thinking, the old attitudes and old ill commitments are, are passing away. Because he's your strength. Strength like no other. 
Usha kara lo boche. Oh bo 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 boche. Yi kanda ba ba ba. Hey come ma 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 mo sota. Ba ba. Tell your sin. You have no more authority. Speak. Speak it over your life. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm made whole. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. The law was only a shadow leading up to Christ. So the law could not expunge your sins. Couldn't wash your sins away. Only the water. The water could exonerate you from that. Your trust making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. We're the last quarter, saints. And Christ is about to do a new thing. I'm talking about a world order. No, the order's going to be when Christ cracked the sky. You're not going to have time to change your ways. He said, I'm going to come back in the twinkling of an eye. He cut on a bullshit. And you won't even have a chance to come down off your high horse. You won't, baby, have a chance to change your old imagination. You won't have a time to stop sinning. It's the time right here. You have power in the Holy Ghost to control your vessel. But the thing is, do you have the Holy Ghost? I would like to give order. Before I go any further, to the head of my life, Jesus Christ, my God, my Lord and Savior, a sovereign God, a holy king. It's nothing like you, God. It's nothing like the power of God. When the Holy Ghost come over you, you can't do what you want no longer. You got to do what the master telling you. We on the new, everything new, new, new. New management. The old way of thinking and all that, it got to go. You got to welcome the new though. That's why the title, Trusting God with Your New Man. I would like to also give honor to the bishop and the mother's church before we just let the, we let all the Holy Ghost out in the place today. We just bless and honor you for standing on your post. And I can say deliberately serving God with a whole heart, soul, mind, and body. We bless and honor you, Bishop and Mother. I want to give honor to my beautiful wife, Minister Latasha. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's so much in you. There's so much God going to do through you for his glory. That's all I can really say. RG, we love you for holding the JWM down. We thank you. JWM, I bless and honor y'all for your commitment to go to war no matter. We're not missing anything. We got Jesus. When the music go off, y'all, guess what? Don't you stop praising. Because you got the music in you. The minister-elect, I'm going to especially because he just became, we just bless you for always being on your post. The minister of staff. Your, your family, everything connected to your, your assignment in the kingdom of God. We bless and honor for the deacons and their wives. For those that are not here, we send a special blessing upon them. For the whole household of faith that God jointly and netly put together for a time like this, we pray that you receive something wholesome today in the spirit to take out in the highways and the byway to give to somebody that needs. Somebody need new hope. Somebody need a new praise. Somebody need a new trust. Somebody need some new belief in him. Take it out and see what God can do through you today. So we bless and honor you. Won't take up any time, any more of the time. I don't take this time uh, for granted or lightly as I stand before you. You can turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. And we can see what the Bible, what the Bible has to say. Amen. You don't always look at the 
the verses in the Bible. Galatians, go. Ephesians, eat. Philippians, popcorn. Go eat popcorn. You know you like popcorn anyway. You got to try and fool me. Butter, put that butter on it. Hallelujah. I'm going to make somebody hungry. Probably make myself hungry. Philippians 2.12. Listen how the Bible makes it. God, God, God breathed this into man to pen it in, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, and not as in my presence only. You know, because some of us like to do it in his presence only. You know that protocol, the church protocol. But no much more, now, excuse me, much more in my absence. Amen? But we know God is everywhere. Can't escape the presence of God. But see, some of us, if we don't see him, we don't believe what he's doing. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Not your neighbor. Don't look at your neighbor and say, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. Work out your own. Your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure dear heavenly father we humbly approach your throne of grace god we we approach your grace to, i mean your throne today god asking for forgiveness of our sins from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet father god forgive us god from the, some of the things we said and done that was displeasing in your eyesight that did not bring glory or honor to your holy and righteous name, God. My God, as we come before you, we, we lay out everything we have just to hear what you have to say, God. We open up our supernatural ear gates because we need to hear from you today, God. We want to hear from you. We welcome you in this place to speak and to have your way. So, God, we bless you, magnify you, honor, and we lift your name up and we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. You may have a seat. Mm-mm. You are my strength. Amen. So with his strength, you're able to work out the new man, right? You're able to trust God with your new man. Scripture tells us, therefore, he said it with this read it, but as believers, do you believe you have a responsibility to outwardly show and to express the new man that you are or she he or her is in Jesus do you believe that this morning could you recall the day of your salvation when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior could you remember do you know your date maybe it's just a piece of paper to you thrown in the drawer with everything else the Bible the stapler, the stapler, the scissors, and that messy drawer. That's what I call it. The best thing in that drawer is that paper just you dedicating yourself to Jesus Christ. Expressing the day that you did it, the time, the date, and where. Salvation is something we cannot take for granted. Because when you receive that, if you can remember when you receive the new life, the life of Christ, right? Because you, you, are, you are sharing the life of Christ when you're accepting him as your Lord and Savior. This life ensures you that you got to start walking according. You can't walk in the old type of way. You can't say and do as you want to no more. That was the old nature in you before you got changed. The Psalms say, I've been changed, healed, free, delivered. No more chains and stuff holding you. The opportunity is right now. The hope you have in Jesus. That's what I always would use acronyms. Hope. Having only positive expectations. Every time I wake up, I expect the Lord, my Lord, 
Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, to do the impossible to the world in my life. Use me, God, as you see fit. Put a harness over my mouth. Put blinders on my eyes. Let me see only what you want me to see. Let me hear what you want to hear. Because I got to make sure what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. What I'm hearing is what I'm hearing. And what I'm speaking is what I'm speaking. We speak all types of stuff out of our mouth. It don't always line up with the word of God. It's time to start speaking the truth. and Stop giving the lie so much credit. So that was the old nature. We got to show the marvelous, bright, and new nature that God has worked in us. He said that old things have passed away. He mean all them old things. The old behaviors. The old attitudes. The old way of thinking and handling your business, the decision making you were making when you was not saved. And you was trying to work it out all by yourself. We got to show the marvelous nature that God has worked in us. Well, you probably be asking me, well, how did we do this? Elder, you seem like you know what you're talking about. No, I don't know anything. I just know what Christ is talking about. I know because he left it on the record for all of us to know what he's trying to relate to us in the spirit. And he's giving me the Holy Ghost to discern what he's saying to me. So I have to think about what God is saying. He has left it. This is not a mystery. Then he said, I'll be back in the twinkling of an eye. So be ye ready. There's no more time to waste. How do we do this? Apostle Paul gives an answer. Let's see what Ephesians 4.22 says. That's right before Philippians. 4.22. And I'm going to read for a second. 4.22. The Bible says this, that, that ye. This is an individual thing. Your relationship is built on the individual relationship you have with your Lord and Savior. Can't tell my wife to do what I ain't doing. Even though I might think I'm doing it. Act like I know what I'm doing. There's only one person that knows. The Bible is the scripture say, you know, Lord. You know what you're doing, God. And he says it that ye put off concerning. Look. The former conversations, the old man, the former conversations, the old man having, talking with your boys, talking all half outside your neck, talking loud, saying nothing. Spending two hours, you could have been at a nursery home consoling somebody. You could have been outside giving somebody something to eat. But yet you had to have these big conversations. Like you got to keep going back, dibbling and dabbling in your old former. That's what it says, your former conversations. Old man, which is corrupt. See, see, I ain't got to tell you your ways are corrupt. It say, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts that you once shared in that former conversations. Talking about woman. Talking about how tight my body look. He was a whole married man. Former means former. We're not talking about former market. We're talking about the former actions that you displayed before you got saved. You need to cut it. You need to, you need to separate yourself from the world. God ain't going to do everything for you. He giving you the Holy Ghost. Now why don't you let him use you? The deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, first of all, your mind got to be renewed. You got to have a renewed mind before you can do anything that God is telling you. Because if you continue, uh, that's why he said, let this mind that I have also be in Christ Jesus. You need to have the mindset that Jesus had. The compassion, the merciful. You know, we could be at times unmerciful. We could be ungrateful unholy that's what the word says to us we could be a, be these things because we don't have a renewed mind you got to be renewed in the spirit 
till you had the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't going to let you say everything and do everything you want without coming to you and letting you know and start convicting you. It'll let you know. You know when you're doing something wrong. Amen? You already know. I'm ready to step in that club. And, you know, it's, a lot of things can happen, right? You might want to think, you might want to go back to your old swag and walk in there. You get in there, spirit get in, you start doing just what you used to do. That's like a person that smoked cigarettes for years. They go back, they can still hold that hand like that. Hey, hey, I know God is talking right now because the whole thing is about it. If we don't change our mind, one thing about the mind, you have a target on your mind. If you don't change your mind, your mind will cause you, your body to go everywhere it wants to go. That's why the devil has a target on your mind. He wants to attack your mind for a reason to keep you distracted so you won't get in here and know what the new man has to offer for you. That's why I come to tell you this morning, trust God with your new man. We got to trust him. And I look at this, and I'm going to go through it. I'm going to breeze through it, but it's going to be some parts. I'm going to have to stop. And that you put on the new man. This is a command. I think we take his, his Bible as just words saying to us, God is commanding you to put the new man on. You think Uncle Sam uh, will want anything different? You go into the military, what the first thing he wants you to do? He wants you to change. He wants you to become something else. He sends your clothes back home, and he tells you ain't going to do what you want to hear. You ain't in charge. He's going to have people over charge. It's authority. That's why God has authority in the churches. He has authority over the churches. He have a, It's authority, but you've got to have God's spirit to appreciate the authority. Yeah, it might hurt when somebody tell you what to do sometimes. But look at the benefits, the long-term benefits of being humble. The Bible says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he will exalt you. The, I mean, we sing the songs, I will exalt you and all that. But we got to exalt the people that God placed in our lives, too. And what I mean by that is just humbling yourself and respecting the authority. So hard to respect the authority, man. Because your spirit is in war right now with this new man. The old man is in the pool floating over there, but don't think he can't rise back up. Say the right thing to the right person at the right time in the wrong situation. And watch, watch what happens. I hope you forgive him, though, after it's, after it's all said and done, because that's the problem. When people do speak out of contact to us and say things, we have a problem with forgiving. But we, this is a new man. This is a part of the new man. The new man has to learn how to forgive. Forget and let go. Ain't no, yeah, I'll forgive him, but I ain't going to never forget. You ain't forgive nothing. And the forgiveness is not for them starting from the jump street. It's for you. It's for you. So he said, put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. What he is, he's created and righteousness, and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, oh my goodness, putting away lying, it's going to be a problem for many. Speaking every man truth with his neighbor, oh my God, I can't tell him no truth because they'll run my business down the street real fast. So I'm going to tell him a lie and let him run that around. And that's just how it happened. It may sound like I'm sitting up here just making some stuff up, but I guarantee I'm speaking to a soul this morning. If it ain't in the building, it's on the, it's on the social media. And I ain't come to knock you down, beat you up. I come to lift you up in Jesus' name. Come to let you know that there's something that you can, you can work out this new man. You just need God's spirit. Wherefore, putting away lies. Speaking every man truth with his neighbor. For we are... Members of one another. So I have a responsibility to you outwardly to express the change, show you what Jesus is doing in my life by the way I'm speaking to you, treating you, loving you, caring for you, supporting you, encouraging you. There's got to be a change. Since no change, you're the same person trying to walk a different life you you know you're just like the show a great pretender pretending to be something you're not acting like something you're not it's easy to act and play church but 
but you got to know the, the prophecies of the whole message that you are the church. And since you know you're the church, it's time to act like the church. Be kind. Know that you're created in righteousness and true holiness. Put away them lies. Don't lie no more. Speak the truth no matter whether it hurt or not, but speak it in love. Don't worry about how it hurts or distract the people. We are members of one another. You should think a little highly of your neighbor more than you think of yourself. You should be more concerned about what somebody else is going through. Because that's the way God is molding you right now. Don't make God take, don't make the powder take the clay off the wheel and throw it down and bust it up again. You don't want him to do that. So here we see. Be ye angry. He's trying to not, he's not saying I'm giving you a license to be angry and all that and do what you want. He ain't telling you go kill somebody, beat somebody, bust somebody in here with a bat. He ain't telling you that. He's saying if you get, if something gets you to the point and you get angry over it, he said, just don't sin. Because what follows the action of you being angry is what he is going to view. That's the calling of the names. Because you know words do hurt. Saying things that you should not say that you can't get back when you get out of this tongue and get out of this mouth of yours. You can't get it back. Uh, Pastor Butler used to always say it's like putting a bag of feathers together and turning the fan on and, and letting them go and how you going to chase. You can't get all those things back. You can't get those harmful words you saying to your spouse back. You can't get those to your neighbors back. You can't get it back. You have to build all over again. Rebuild, get confident. People want to trust you no more. That's why we trust in God. But we got to trust him with the new you. The old you is counterfeit. Some people in the church, they, they amaze me. They say, I'm a sheep. I look around, I see you got some big teeth. But to turn me apart at any time. All I got to do is say something you don't like. We got to get to the point where we can talk to each other, have relations, have conversations, and this, and let, let's pray before we have this talk, and let's pray closing out. We should, we should be able to do that. Reason with one another through the scriptures. See, but what it is, we reason with one another with the flesh. What the flesh don't like. What God like is more important for both of us, will be for both of us than us sitting up here going back and forth. Be ye angry, sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Oh man, I wish I could take some of the moments back where I did. I repented, but I wish I could did. I wish I could have took some of them times back where I laid in there. Babe, can I can I use it? It was times, man, where I got so disrespectful to my my wife, and I was saying stuff, man, and 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 uh. I went my separate ways, and I went downstairs, and I found me old little place like Joan in the corner and went fast asleep. And, man, those dreams that came to me because I'm saved. Them dreams came to me. I knew they came from God. I got up, man. I ran upstairs. I think I remember coming up to the side of your bed, and I told you I was sorry, and I had tears come down my eyes. I wasn't just telling her I was sorry so that I can, me and her could be back up in the bed again. You know, everybody said, hey, don't ever leave your bed. But sometimes things get heated where as though you got to leave the place. You can't stay in there. But she loved me and she forgave me. She forgave me, but God was not going to let me get the sleep I thought I was going to get. And Jonah didn't get the sleep that he thought he was going to get when he was running away from God. See, and that's why you have to make sure you're a new man. You're not that old person no more. So I wish I could get some of those things back that I said. And, you know, I'll tell you again, babe, I love you. And I repented that day. And I'm, I'm just as ever sorry as I said it because it does come back and you think about it. But therefore, there is no more condemnation for those that are in Christ. So you don't have to beat yourself over some of your past mistakes and issues. Amen? You have to beat yourself up. But you do have to think about it before you say something. I think the word was think. Is it true or is it trustworthy? H is it is it is it uh, is it honest, helpful? Is uh, is it uh, ins inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Before we say things, make sure we got our stuff lined up. Make sure we in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen. 
That was just my piece. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Never give place to the devil. Oh, come on. We, some of us, we give place to the devil every day. We give place to the devil every day by allowing the enemy to, to take up space in your head for free circulating through your air gates. All you can think about is the negative. All you can think about is letting somebody down. All you can think about is yourself. Selfish person. So here we is, find ourselves. He said, never get placed. He said, never. He didn't say sometimes get placed, did he? He said, never get placed to him. Because once he gets a little foothold into your marriage, a little foothold into your, your business, a little foothold into uh, just some of the reports you have with people, He'll always have a way to keep you arguing and, and, and have you not connecting like you should. We should be like what the Bible just said. Let me go back to it. He said that we are members one of another. So why are we constantly in a battle fighting and doing this all against one another? Because when we do it to one another, we're doing it to Jesus. That's who we're doing it to. It's getting, it's getting played out too. 28 said, let him that still, still no more. Oh, we have some thieves in here. You ain't going to want to tell me you stole that bubble gun, you're a thief. You pick that cough drop up off your worker's desk and you didn't ask him, you're a thief. You took somebody's pen and you did not say, let me borrow your pen and you took it. And you brought it back when all the ink was gone. That's stealing. But what about stealing somebody's joy? What about knowing you deliberately stole somebody's joy? Somebody, you stole somebody's peace deliberately. It's a question for you. Are you doing what you're supposed to do instead of, are you building people up in the kingdom of God or are you, deter, are you turning them down? That's why I love it. It said, no weapons formed against me shall prosper. And any false tongue that rises up against me, God said, I've already condemned it. This is the hurtness of the Lord. That he say, I did it already. See, God is always doing things for us. I think it's time for us to start doing things that we can do, that we have power over to do. It's time to use the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to help you to maneuver you through this world. To stick to your commitments. To stick to the plans that God has for you. He said they're good and they're not evil, but they come in expected time. This is your time right now. We don't have a whole bunch of time. Stop thinking you got a whole bunch of time. Stop thinking you're going to go to another generation. Stop thinking, stop worrying about tomorrow because the day has enough problems of its own. It's time to start living right now in the now. That's why the Bible said in Hebrew, right now faith. I got a right now faith to please God right now. I'll get it together a little later on. Maybe a little later on, God, you'll, you'll help me get myself together. Or I'll come to that church just a little later. Or I'll, I'll do this. I'll, I'll get in the church. I'll do what I, I'll do my best. You need to have a right now faith. That's why he said a right now faith. Right now. It's a right now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things that are not seen. Because you don't see God doing a work in you. He started this work, and he's going to finish it. We just got to believe him for it. So, so let him steal no more. I'd rather let him labor. Oh, I don't want to do no work. I ain't trying to work. I'm already working on my job. What well, I got to come to church and work for? I'm already doing I ain't got, I ain't got to come to do no work in the church. This ain't no job. I, I just show up anytime I want to. All oh, late, do what I want to. Say what I want to say. Can't nobody stop me. I don't get paid here. Your, 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 your paycheck here is better than the paycheck you're making on your physical job. Hallelujah. Glory. Let me just bust your bubble just in case you had that in your mind. You know, it's because you're thinking that paycheck that you that you are receiving, that, man, my God, that paycheck not only you will receive, but the, your children are far off. It's your children, children. It's this thing that's generated. That's how you might not be here, but you hear through your children. So that paycheck that God has given you, what he said, I died and I became poor, so you may be rich. You're going to spend it one day when the Holy Ghost come and get you. When Jesus come to take you back, you're going to spend it because you need his spirit. Because if you don't have his spirit, what the Bible says, he said, you don't have his spirit, then you are none of mine. 
You're none of mine. You've been purchased with a, with a price I can't talk about. You've been bought with a price. Can I say a hell of a price? Because it's going to keep you out of hell. When you've been bought and purchased with the blood of the lamb, it'll keep you out of hell. And it'll place you on your way to heaven. So I thank God for that. Just the little verses. Let me, let me close this out. But let him la la labor, working with his hands. We don't like work with our hands. The thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. And I'm always would tell you my favorite scripture. Say, you know, mind your business and work with your hands with what the Lord has given you. God has given each and every one of us a gift. And we can work it with our hands. But sometimes we're too busy working it with our mouths and we're distracting ourselves. God wants you to do good works with your hands for somebody that's in need. That's what he said, somebody that, that, that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, oh my God, you mean tell me I got to let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and the evil speak. I can't speak evil no more. Then you need to stop speaking evil because every time I turn around, the bishop or the, or the uh, past, sister pastor, you can't talk like that. We're all in the same boat. So we need to all do the same thing in unity. I can't do it. You can't do it. We, we can't do it. Amen? We need to do this thing together the right way. Stop pointing fingers. And the bishop always said, you got the mother ones coming at you. I got to let all this bitterness go. This wrath. This anger. This clamor. Evil speaking. Put it away from you. But all malice. And be ye kind. Tell me I got to be kind to you after you done just gave me the fingers on the highway. I got to be kind to you and you done just took my job. I got to be kind to you. You done just took my spot on the praise team. I got to be kind to you. You got elevated in the church before I did. I got to be kind. My goodness. Gotta be kind to one another. T tender hearted. Man, I did eight years in prison. I, I, how's I gonna be tender hearted? Whew, oh, compassion. Forgiving one another. Bishop, this can't be. I can't be reading the right verse. <sighs> Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Want all this forgiven to be only on me. You, you thought you should have forgave me, bro. Told you I was sorry. If I did it ten times. Well, how many times Peter had the question presented to him? How many times? Peter said seven, man. Because see, Peter knew he knew the word, but he also had a thing called flesh attacked to him. He wanted the complete number. He said seven. That's cool. Jesus is going to be all right with that answer. Seven. See, because sometimes we like to go ahead, God. We like to put the cart before the horse. So he said seven. Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. And I have never met a man or woman on this earth that somebody sinned against you 490 times in one day. <laughs> and I probably would never meet a person like that. Because if they're sinning like that, I don't want to be around going to get hectic. I might have to come out. You know what I mean? The old man try to get up. Chill out, boy. Lay down in the name of Jesus. Lay down. We were taught, man, with regards to the former way of life. So many things. That grandmother and them told us this and that. But the Bible here is telling us to, to pin off your old self, you know, which is being corrupted uh, by its deceitful. I like the word deceitful desires. Things you want. But be made new in the attitudes of your minds. Come on, man. To put 
on the new self, created to be like God and true righteousness and holiness. So we must put off the falsehood, speaking, but start speaking truthfully to your neighbor. We are members of one body. And in, in your anger, do not sin. Don't let the sun go down, saints of God. Don't let him go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold in any of your regular activities for that day. But work. We all got to work. You know, because it said, I don't mind. It's a devil. Come on, man. This is playground. He's sitting around there while you're on the playground throwing stuff in your head and making up stuff. You over there playing in the dirt and he doing other stuff. He said, I'm going to get him, man. When he grow up, I'm going to place this before him at this time. See, all them tricks he got and all that, we can combat him with the Holy Ghost, man. Will help us. So we got to, we're going to work. We got to do something youthful with our, our own hand. And I know at time it's hard to do these things. But we got to share with what we got with those that are in need. Do not let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. But only let something, let, let something come out that's helpful, right? Building up others according to their needs. These scriptures are powerful. And we, we're looking for somebody else to be benefit from it. I thank God that we have assets and we have things that we can give to others that they, ben they can benefit off. Amen? If it's just a kind hello, if it's just a, a hug, if it's just a kind ear, if it's just a few dollars, something to help somebody else. Amen? And I know sometimes we, we, we don't look at it like we can't help, but we have enough to help them with. And we got the word of God will really help help them. Sometimes you give them a word, man, that word is enough to break up everything. So don't let it come out your mouth. Be helpful. Let them benefit off of you. God has created you. You're a light. You're a beacon of light that everybody is looking at, and they're coming to you. And that's why they, they're asking you all the time. Your phone always ringing. Somebody always wants something from you because God know you got it. Look at that. He know you got everything you need. He, he, he said you got all the needs. He said I supply all your needs according to his riches and glories. When you're in Christ Jesus, you're rich just like he is. You have power. You've been granted access. You can go into the throne. You can pray. You know what I mean? You can believe. You can fast. And God, he listens. So when you look at all this, you say we've been sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness and rage, all that stuff that I, 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 I was battling with one time, anger. And I still from time to time, I get, I get all angry at stuff. But the Bible says sin not, but I don't want to make an excuse for behavior. Brawling, I ain't, I ain't doing that no more, God. Thank you. Slanders, malice, be kind, compassionate to one another. Forgive, for, forgive each other. Just as Christ forgave you. That's the point right there. The works of the flesh are seen in Galatians 5, 19, 22. Have been put to death in Christ. So we ought to not revisit them. If the works, of, if it's been put to death, why we keep revisiting these old ways? The new man should be found not trifling with these things. It's trifling to see that you clean your room up only on Monday. And the rest of the, your days, your room is trifling. You got all this stuff up in there. Don't nobody want to come in there. The dog don't want to come in your room. So this is the things that, that your home, your house. You come into somebody's house, the dishes are in the living room. What's going on here? So that's the same way in your body. Your body right now for Christ, your temple. So much stuff, so much dirt, so much pollution. In your minds, in your heart. And God's saying, you got to clean these things up. Or I'm going to come in to clean them up for you and you ain't going to like them. Because some of the things you want to hold on to, he said, I'm going to snatch them away from you. I'm going to stop you from participating. Cause you to spectate on those things. So don't revisit them. The new man should be found not with these. And while you enjoy the forgiveness in Christ, you need to learn how to to extend that forgiveness to somebody else. We understand that we have power to live above the works of the flesh. Amen? Remember the Christ. The cross came to, to break up and to eradicate the works of the flesh. That's what the cross of Jesus came to do. It, it came to eradicate and break up the works of the flesh. 
You don't have to struggle with those no more. You can, you can get better. You just got to pray fast and believe God and want to change. Remember, grace is not a license to sin. Amen? It's a place where sin is not allowed. Sin is not allowed. We must understand that we are ambassadors of Christ. Amen? Are you ambass How many ambassadors I got out there for Christ? I always want to give a good word to somebody. Always willing to hear a good word. Ain't in no rush to go nowhere when the word is coming forth. Even though the rear skin and all these game commanders and everybody on, still ain't in no rush to go nowhere. Because what God has to say through the spirit to me is more important than what a TV could ever. And for y'all, some of the people that don't know, we got a one o'clock service coming up today. Yeah? I hope to see all y'all in the service. Amen. All right, this little joke. This little joke, huh? You know what I mean? Start seeing people leaving out. Look. That was a nice little sin. But yeah, it's not a license to sin, man. Grace is uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. Acronyms. I keep an acronym for everything. Because it helps me to remember God's word. Amen? It helps me to hide it in my heart so I won't sin against my God. Amen? That's just the little simpleness that I do. Our actions and lifestyle, they represent those of Christ to the world. So we must be careful not to misrepresent Christ. Jesus, when you think about Jesus, he didn't give anybody anything to accuse him of. So why should we? We shouldn't either. Look at First Peter. They tell you, well, you can see uh, Peter 2.22, right? I think it's First Peter 2.22, just for your reading sake. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I got a little affirmation if I can get you to stand to your feet. Just an affirmation. Just saying God to you. Just saying some new stuff. And it's not nothing that you can't agree with. Carefully discerned in the spirit. Prayed over. Believing God will move through us for it. Let's just lift our hearts up right now. There's so much going on. Let's say, I affirm that I am brand new. I have no past, but only a future and a hope in Christ Jesus. I continually to pit off the workings of the old man, and I put on the new man. I do not walk in the flesh, but I am continually in tune with the spirit. I bring the flesh under subjection by the power of the spirit because I am yielded to the voice of the spirit of God only. Glory to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace, God. Just we thank you for everything. We thank you for a simple word. We just thank you for coming into us, uh, uh, coming and sitting in the service with us and spreading your love throughout the service, God. We just thank you for everything that you've done here today. We thank you for the hearts that you've healed. We thank you for bodies that were healed. We thank you for situations and circumstances being worked out. Uh, God, we just thank you for your supernatural ability to come and to take care of us, hold us, help us up, become things that to us that we have never, ever known that we could become, God. We thank you for being our father, our friend. We thank you for helping us. We thank you for keeping us. Oh, God, we thank you for showing us our future in you. We bless you. We magnify you, Lord. We hold, we hold you up high, God. We lift your name up above all names, God. Your name, Jesus, is the only name that we will bow to, God. We thank you for just so much. We thank you for, uh, we thank you for our husbands, our wives. We thank you for our cars, our homes. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our church family. We thank you just in general, God, because you are a good God, a good Father, and we bless you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay.